welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, and I'm very happy to be spending some time with you today. Sorry, my puppy is playing in the background <laughs> and just distracted me a little bit. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have so much respect for you. And yeah, don't hesitate to leave me a comment. Join me on Facebook and connect with me. I hope you're doing well. And if you're not doing well, I hope this little episode here helps you to feel better. I also have a, a website where you can find my podcast, www.theborealisexperience.com. And the reason I'm mentioning this is that at the very top, you can put in keywords. And if you want to find an episode to a specific topic, you just put in that keyword and it will spit you out an episode on that topic. If I haven't produced an episode on a topic that you need and want me to talk about, then never hesitate to shoot me a message and let me know what you need. And I will make sure to cover your topic also anonymously if you don't want to be um, mentioned. As promised today, I want to talk about love starvation. Why do I want to talk about it? Because this is what I feel. I feel that we are all on so many levels starved. We're so hungry for love, physical touch, healing touch, deep connection, intimacy, warmth, feeling understood, feeling seen, feeling heard. And all I can say is I want to help that. I want to alleviate these feelings. And now my dog is feeding on something that I have to take out of his mouth. I will be right back. Now we got everything sorted. So we feel disconnected. We feel... We see people through a plexiglass. And we literally, like we actually do at the grocery store, at least here in Canada. We see each other, but we don't really connect deeply. We are craving physical touch, yet we're so scared because what if the person rejects me? What if society says this is harassment? What if it's so crazy? Physical touch is so, something so natural, yet right now, there's all these weird mixed messages around it, and we don't really know how to behave with each other anymore. And this whole virus talk, this whole virus dominating our societies, is not making it better. Because now we're being told, now we believe, now we live in fear of the other. Being in contact with another person might kill you or might kill another person that you love and have contact with. And I'm not here to say, say this is wrong, the news are bad, blah, blah, blah. I'm never going to engage in that conversation but all I'm seeing is people being lonely and in pain because we're being love-starved. So what can we do about this? What can we do to feel better, to be more connected to ourselves, to feel more loving 
accepting towards ourselves and then to bring that to the outside world. I use this time of isolation to deeply reconnect to myself. And I'm doing it the very basic way. Yeah, I went through a yoga teacher training and I'm very interested in meditation and such. But what I'm doing, I feel, is like the real basic of being a human being. Breathing. Tuning into your breath. Is my breath shallow? Or do I allow my entire lungs to breathe in and exhale? I put one hand onto my heart and feel my heartbeat. Can you imagine there's people out there? I once worked with a client and he said he cannot have earbuds in his ears because sometimes that makes him hear his pulse, his heartbeat, and that freaks him out. And I just thought, oh my God, like you can't even hear your own heartbeat? That's so crazy. That is you. That is what keeping what keeps you alive. Laying down on the floor, closing your eyes, you know, being on a, a hard surface and feeling your lungs expanding and then retracting again, expanding and retracting. Maybe hover above yourself and look down on yourself and look at your body. Look how magnificent it is. It is not only protecting you, but it is keeping you alive. It is constantly there for you. And then you go further and maybe you have a mirror and can look yourself in the eyes or maybe you just can look out the window and you see that your eyes are consuming. What are your eyes consuming? Are they consuming good, nurturing energy? Or is it fast food? Do you see the beauty of life out there? Or do you see gray shades and darkness and fear and hatred? Now you go to your ears. What are your ears consuming? Is it beautiful, soothing music? Is it a soothing voice of someone you love? Is it content that makes you feel good? When it comes to physical touch, when you have a shower, do you just go through your quick routine of scrubbing off all the parts and then off you go? Or do you deeply appreciate a little bit of self-love there, not in a sexual way, but just touching your skin, thanking your body for being there for you each second of your life. When you wash your hair, when you massage your head a little bit, you can see that you can give yourself warmth and love and shelter and nurturing with your bare hands without any expensive creams or whatever is out there that people are trying to sell to you. Your hands can be very healing, not only on other bodies, but you can touch your skin you can massage your head or your shoulders, your neck. You can p 
Put your hands onto your belly, onto your heart. There's a couple mudras from yoga that you can put your fingers in in certain positions that I still like haven't understood it fully, but I, I can certainly feel it when you bring your index and your thumb together and your three other fingers are kind of stretched away a little bit. It's kind of a closed circle now. You can massage your temples. Next time you eat, you can send gratefulness for all to all the people out there who have helped you to have that food on your plate. Imagine imagining the chain of all the people helping out. And then you taste that food and you deeply appreciate what you're eating there. You know that what you eat is what you become, right? You, you ingest your food and you not only poop it out again, your body actually takes it in, takes the nutrients out and keeps it in your body, supports your nervous system, your organs, your heart. Everything you eat will affect your health and the way you feel mentally and emotionally. So you sit there, you appreciate your food, appreciate everybody who has helped you to get it onto your plate, and then you imagine your body absorbing all the good nutrients. And you know what the funny thing is with people who want to lose weight? Once they do this little exercise, they realize, holy shit, Like I don't need that extra chocolate I don't need that extra fries that I just ordered. My body is soaking all of this in. I have to scrub my pants and my plates and my cutlery with so much soap because it is so greasy and all caked in. But this is what is happening inside of your body now. So all I'm saying here is that deep appreciation for your body will change the way you see yourself and feel about yourself. And you don't need anything for it, just your presence, just a little bit of imagination. And the more aware you will become of how you treat your body, the more aware you will be with what you put into your body. And your body is like, I, I want to say that entity that makes you feel all these things, right? The feelings and the pain, the suffering, the love. So if you treat that body well, you will be more receptive to love as well. And that, in return, can be seen by other people. They can see the self-acceptance, the self-respect. They can see that glow and they will be so magnetized by you. Being present with yourself and taking deep care of yourself. They want to connect to that because that is something they are missing. And then you can teach them what I'm teaching you here. And then if people are open for it, you can start a conversation, a deep connection. And we can start to talk about physical touch again. I feel, like I said at the beginning, there's so many mixed messages out there when it comes to physical touch and sexuality and consent and harassment and blah, blah, blah. If we learn to properly communicate with each other again, we will open up to each other like flowers to the bee. 
And then you can be the bee again or you can be the flower and receive. And we can all connect on deeper levels to each other again. But we have to gain trust again. There's so much distrust and fear out there. We have to gain trust in ourselves, in our bodies. Trust that we can strengthen our immune system with these self-love practices. And maybe additionally taking vitamins, going for walks, drinking enough water and sleeping. Sleep is so incredibly important. And I'm also providing you with meditations here. So when you go onto my website, theborealisexperience.com and put in the search bar meditation, it should spit you out a couple episodes on meditation and that can very well help you on finding a deeper sleep. So I see and feel the love starvation in our society and my vision is to give people these tools and the funny thing is that I know we each have these tools we just have to be remembered I'm not teaching you something new here I'm just remembering you of the power you have and not only the power but the connection to yourself that you have and I remind you Sorry, I don't say I remember you, I remind you. <laughs> I remind you of the huge love that you're carrying inside of yourself. And that love wants to be expressed towards yourself. And then through that, towards others. Deep trust, deep love go hand in hand and can dissolve hatred and fear conversations raw conversations asking questions being curious instead of making assumptions will spark raw and beautiful connecting nurturing conversations again and that in turn will make us feel less lonely and more connected That is my vision for the next couple of months and years to come. To remind you of the deep connection that you can have to yourself and then to others. Thank you so much for listening to this episode here. I'm gonna leave you for now. Let you on your own. You know where you can find me always on Instagram, The Borealis Experience, or on Facebook, Aurora Eggert. I'm so grateful to be on this journey with you. Until next time.